So right around 2015, right before my restaurant burned down, a gentleman by the name of Keith Carnavali introduced a concept to me. Um, and he said one day out of nowhere, he said, you've got to just keep it kiss, man. And I was like, what? And he's like, keep it simple, stupid. And at the time, I did not understand what he was talking about. But I guess the reason why he even introduced that to me or told me about it was because we were trying to transform my restaurant from an American cuisine to a, another thing that would actually work and fit the area. And he was just telling me how I th should set up my kitchen and how everything should be just completely simple because my menu before was just overcomplicated. We were serving barbecue and burgers and fries. We were also trying to sell uh, sushi and we were selling you know, ribs and we were trying to sell Asian food and all kinds of things. So people were kind of confused. And he was just telling me how I should keep things simple. But it would take another three to four years and at least another half a dozen failed businesses until I actually really took what he said to heart and really started thinking about it. So right around 2018 um, or 2017, I met a, 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 a new coach uh, or a new mentor that I started now learning from and I started following and so on. And after I really came very close with that mentor, um, he started introducing the same concept into my life, but it was a little different. You know, he wouldn't call a kiss. It was more of like, hey, you just gotta, you know, keep making sure that everything is clean in your life, making sure that everything is very simple. And every time you want to, you know, you want to add something new into your life, think about, can I accomplish what I have today? Uh, um, and uh, with what I, you know, or can I accomplish what I want doing what I have today? You know, so this is kind of a concept that it's been in my life and that has completely transformed my life. And I really want to share with you guys all the lessons learned inside of this video. So if this is your first time, consider subscribing. Also, please do give the video a thumbs up because it'll help us, uh, you know, rank in the algorithms. So if you've watched my videos, before and if you have um, you know been on this channel for any length of time you're gonna hear me always talk about uh, two things and those are kiss and focus and I believe that those two things go hand in hand right uh, very I mean very closely you know because focus is all about keeping just narrow vision into one thing and every single human being on earth that has accomplished anything great in life simply could not do it unless they focused on one thing if you look at Amazon's very early on days, Amazon really was nothing but an online bookstore. That's how Amazon really started and that was really what they wanted to do. Um, and then as things progressed and as Amazon started growing, um, they simply introduced you know, music and then they introduced uh, you know, other things into their business model. Same thing with Apple, same thing with you know, Tesla. Like if you look at Tesla, and if you compare it to the traditional, um, you know, traditional car business or a car company, you're going to realize that Tesla literally only has three cars. You know, they've well, actually four cars now. You know, they've got the S model, they've got the X model, they have the E model, and then, um, and then now they have the other one that's like a mini SUV, which just came on. But really, when they first launched, they only had two cars. They had the X and they had the S, and that's it. If you go to a Mercedes dealer, if you go to a, a Toyota dealer, if you go to a BMW dealer, I mean, if you, I don't know if you've been following BMW, but they now have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine series, and they're all the same. And then every single one of them has like 15 different models. There is a 320 and a 350 and a 360. You know, same thing with the Mercedes. There is a 250 and a 350 and a 550 and a 700 and a, you know, and it's like all these different things that they keep adding. And then you look at the evaluation, the valuation of like a BMW or a Mercedes and a Tesla, a BMW and a Mercedes are worth anywhere between 40 to 50 billion, where a Tesla is worth half a trillion. And Tesla been only around for about 20 years where BMW and Mercedes have been around for 60, 70, 80 years, right? Why? Because they were just focused on doing one thing, and they kept it kiss. They kept it simple, stupid, right? So some people might say, Bashar, you always look like you're wearing exactly the same thing in all of your videos. And you know, as I 
started creating content and, and I realized that it was something that I enjoy and that I'm going to be in front of camera very often, right? Um, and, and sometimes I would go out and do photo shoots. Um, you know, I would always need to think about my last video, what shirt was I wearing, right? And then I would always need to like buy new stuff because if you watch 10 of my videos, you'd see that like, really, I'm only wearing like two different shirts, you know, and maybe even one, one shirt, you know, uh, because I forget that my other videos, I was wearing this shirt and I need to wear something different. So when I'd go shopping, I would need to think about, okay, I need to buy new clothes, but then I would find a shirt that I would like, but I don't have anything that matches with it, like any shorts or any pants. So I would need now to buy another set of pants. And then if I bought that, those set of pants, well now it doesn't make sense if I only would wear it with one shirt, I should buy other shirts. And if I bought other shirts, maybe they have a different color scheme that they would look even nicer with other pants. And then now I bought other pants. Well now, what about the shoes? The shoes don't match. So now I have to go buy all these different shoes. And it just got very complicated, you know? And I would realize that every time I went shopping, up until recently, when I actually started working out, you know, I used to have a pretty weird shaped body, you know, and even until now, my shoulders are not very wide, my head is huge, and I just look funny in clothes, you know? Uh, so when I would go shopping, it would literally take me hours shopping for stuff. And, and then I quickly realized that I'm spending and really wasting time on a, uh, an activity that is really doesn't hold a, any kind of ROI, any kind of return on investment. So for me, as I'm growing my business, you see, this kind of comes back to focus. One very important um, aspect of our lives that we have is our time. People say that money is valuable, but really there is nothing more valuable than your time because there's only 24 hours in a single day, right? And in order for you to grow something massively, you truly have to think about every single minute and how it's being spent, right? So for me, because we're growing a huge company and because we have a huge mission of impacting the lives of 1 million people, I really had to be very careful about time management and how I spent every single minute of my day, right? So when I looked at all the activities, you know, I would, I did a, uh, 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 I did a, a, a kind of a, like I journey, you know, I, I took my entire day and I said, okay, where do I spend my day? I took the week and I said, okay, where do I spend my days? And I took the month and I said, okay, where do I spend all my days, all my weeks? And then I realized that one activity that was just simply holding a zero ROI, which was clothing, shopping for it, and then also wearing it in the morning, because then you got the same dilemma every single morning. You're thinking about what am I going to wear today? I need to shoot a video. What clothes did I wear in the last video? I need to, you know, look good or whatever the case may be. And I'm always thinking about this matches this, this looks better with that. You know, I got a little fatter, I got a little skinnier, whatever, right? So I just realized that I was wasting a whole bunch of time. And one human being on earth that is, that has truly influenced me since I was a little kid is Steve Jobs. And for the biggest reason is that Steve Jobs has been dead for 10 or 15 years yet his company is now bigger than ever. And I'm always thinking about how can I grow a company that is independent of me, that can go on to continue on impacting lives, continue on growing, continue on really helping its team and the people that are you know, trusting and putting their trust in it without me being in the picture. Because look, we are human beings, right? And what if one day I walk out and then I get hit by a bus? What if one day something happens? What if I find out that I have cancer and I've only got six months to live? Well, I'm not going to just go and break up the company because there are people, there are thousands of people right now between team and, and, and students that are depending on the company to stay alive. So I've always looked at Steve Jobs and said, man, this guy had been dead for 15 years, yet his product and his company lives on. And that's what I wanted to do, right? So looking at Steve Jobs, one thing that just popped out at me immediately is that the guy always wears the same exact clothes. And it was just so, I mean, the bulb just went out in my head and I was like, wow, kiss. He kept it simple, stupid. So literally all I did is I went and I threw out all of my entire closet. I went to Levi's because one thing that's great about Levi's is that you can go and then you, you, you know, there's a model it's the only jeans company that I found that has a model. And if you get the same number model with the same size, you can get the same exact cut jeans anywhere in the world. 
And so I bought this thing that I, you know, that I love the fit of it. It's called 510 uh, and it's 30 by 32. Oh, well, 32 by 30. So 32 is the waist, 30 is the length. I bought four of those. And then I bought six shirts that are uh, uh, collared shirts. I only have one that's round. I bought five collared shirts and one uh, uh, without collar. And let me show you guys inside of my closet. So in case if you guys think that I'm actually joking, this is my closet. I've got one, two, three jeans. One is being washed. I've got two shorts that are black. And then I've got all of these shirts. And then I just bought some long sleeve because I'm going to San Diego in, uh, in a couple of weeks. And it's cold over there. Otherwise in Miami, I wouldn't really need anything that is, that is not uh, short sleeve. So you're always gonna see me wearing exactly the same clothes. And then, I don't, know if you guys, I don't think you guys could see my shoes, but I've got four black shoes that are a little different. And this is the same exact clothes that I wear if I'm at home or if I'm out. Because when I'm at home, at work, if I just kind of put on my slippers and I wear shorts and I'm hanging out, like kind of comfy at home, I don't feel like, you know, I feel lazy. So what I do is in the morning, I put on my socks, I put on my shoes and I get dressed as if I'm going out. I also have now a black watch that goes with brand, and that's it. So I wear exactly the same clothes, whether if I'm going out or whether if I am going to just work. It's the same exact clothes. However you see me on video is exactly how you're gonna see me uh, in person. And those of you, I've met many people that follow us, those of you that will see me in person and meet me in person, you're gonna see that it's the same exact clothes. In fact, if you look at my shirts and maybe can you know, spot something, you'll see me wearing the same exact shirts. Again, it takes the mental time out of my day. I don't need to shop as much. I only shop when I need to. If I need another shirt because one of them is just going out because I've been wearing it so much and it's, it's just kind of, you know, getting, getting very bad or whatever, then I'm going to replace it with another shirt or two. So I only buy clothes when I need them. If I have shoes that are getting ripped, I'll throw them and then I'll buy me new shoes. If my jeans are getting faded away, if the color is fading away, then I'll go and buy another pair of jeans. But it'll be literally as easy as walking up to the store, buying it without needing to try it, pay for it at $60, it's $59.99 anywhere you go. I'll buy it and I'll walk out and done deal. In the morning, I don't need to think about what I'm going to wear because anything I grab, I'm going to look exactly the same, right? So that takes time out of the morning and it, it, it relieves energy into my brain so that I can focus on my business, so that I can focus on impacting the lives of a million people at a time, right? And running my company and making sure that the company keeps growing. So for you, obviously this is just me. Now that doesn't mean you should go out there and throw all of your entire closet away and then you know kind of simplify your life that way. For you, just have to look at your life and you just got to start somewhere, right? What are the things that are holding you down? Because right now, if you walk around our house, you're going to see that everything is functional. We don't have paintings on walls. We don't have things that are just sitting there because they're decorative. I don't like decorative stuff. There's a couch. We sit on it. There's a TV we watch. In my office, I've got a chair. I've got a halo light, which my phone is now hooked up on. I don't even have a professional camera. This is my phone. I just bought, you know, actually my marketing team bought me this, this thing because there's a lot of echo, because there's so little stuff in my room that it always echoes. And this sound just sounds like shit all the time. So they bought me this thing, which I wear on me. Uh, and then I've got a little, you know, little mic that hooks up to my laptop. I've got a laptop. I don't even have a desktop. And that's it. My desk is pretty empty. I've got my notebook, my pen, and I've got this little candle thing that I love that I, you know, that I turn on when I'm working. And that's that, right? Everything else around my house, I don't have things holding me down. And a lot of times I see people and I grew up in a household where my mom just never wanted to throw anything away. And I'm pretty sure many of you guys can relate. Well, you know, we could use this. Well, this could this. Well, why are you going to throw it away? There's people around the world that can't even afford to blah, blah, blah. Okay, why am I going to suffer? Because some people around the world, you know, it's like, it's kind of the same saying as like, don't throw away your food. Take, you know, like whenever we go to restaurants, we'll eat steaks that are a couple hundred dollars. If we don't finish it, I'm not going to take it home because I know I'm not going to eat it and it's going to just sit in the fridge and it's going to rot. Our fridge, you open it, there's really nothing in it. There's water maybe some soda. There's my protein shakes and everything and just two days worth of food. And then every two days it gets refreshed. I know if you go to my house, my parents' house, you'll open the fridge and then there's enough food to feed 
10 families for 10 months. Because like the concept of throwing away, it just doesn't exist. But what happens is, it's the same with clothes, it's the same with food, and it's the same, and you're gonna see, if you keep doing these things, you're gonna see that these things show up in different parts of your life, and then now there's all this shit that's just sitting on your shoulders that are holding you down, and that are weighing you down. And it's the same thing if you've got like an unresolved dispute, and I find this, like for me, it's very annoying because I can't, like it's always in the back of my mind, unresolved disputes. Say, I know that, you know, someone sent me an email that I should have responded to, but I'm just kind of like delaying it and procrastinating. And as I'm doing my actual important work, it's always nagging at me in the back of my head. If you've got a text message that you received from someone that you know you should have answered, and it's just sitting there in your, in your inbox, in your phone, it's, as you're doing your important work, it's always nagging at you. So just get it done, just move it out of your way. If you open my inbox, I've seen inboxes, and if your inbox looks like more than five messages in the inbox, you are a freak. If your text messages have more than five conversations, you are a freak. I delete everything once I'm done. If I'm having a conversation with somebody, we're done, I know we're done, I delete it. Right now, if you open my phone, the only text message you're gonna see is my wife because we're always texting back and forth. If you open my email, there's usually no emails in the inbox. Because if it's something that needs to stay there because I need to save it, I just create um, I just create folders. So like attorney goes into the attorney folder. If I finish emailing back and forth, I'm just gonna move it to the attorney folder. If it's uh, um, whatever it is, it moves to, because when I open my email, I want it to see it, I want it to be clear. Otherwise, my eyes are gonna get cluttered and then I'm gonna be thinking about, oh shit, this person said this, this person said that. So when I open my emails, I clear it, and then I make sure the inbox is empty. If the email I just need to keep for whatever reason, I'm gonna move it to a specific folder. Otherwise, I'm just gonna delete it and delete my trash. Again, all these things are just extra things that are weighing you down. So look at your life and then do a journal about all the things that are weighing you down that you don't even need. Look around your house, clean up your closet, clean up your storage, go donate it to people that might actually truly need it. Throw it away, go sell it, flip it on eBay. Go do something with it. But if you have stuff sitting around your house that are not truly, you're not using every day, oh, well, I bought this. Like, this happens all the time. I bought a piece of clothes. I know I won't wear it anymore because it's too tight or too whatever and I can't return it. And it's just gonna sit in my closet. Why? Go donate it to somebody that can actually benefit from it. Or just throw it away. Or try to sell it. Look around your house. I'm pretty sure you can come up with a minimum of 10 to 50 things, items, that are just sitting in your fridge, sitting in your home, that are sitting in your closet, sitting in your storage. Why do you even have storage? We don't have storage. I don't have storage. Why do you have a storage? Why do people even have storage? The concept of storage is the worst thing ever and I cannot understand it. The simpler you keep your life, the further you can go, the faster you can go, and the lighter you're gonna be, and the less things and the less clutter you have. And the less your mind is clouded, the more clear you're gonna be to focus on your future and to be able to think. Because if you don't have clarity in your mind, if you can't think clearly without any noise, you can't think correctly. And you have to be able to think correctly to make the right decisions. The right decisions is also another concept that I simply hate. Many of us are reactive. We hear an idea. We hear something. Boom! We go to it. Let's do it. I was like that. Right now, do you know what I do? If, if someone tells me an idea, if I hear a great idea that sounds amazing, I kick it away. If it comes back to me two, three days later, I kick it away. If it comes back to me two weeks later, then I'm like, all right, this is important. Without writing it down the first time, never write down ideas. Just kick him away because if it's a great idea, it'll keep coming back. Otherwise, you're gonna realize that 70 to 90% of ideas you come up with are stupid as hell. They may sound great at the time, but they're stupid as hell if you just give it some time. If you give it a week, you'll look back and say, what the hell was I even thinking? But us humans, we are so reactive to everything that we see, and it is the reason why many people don't accomplish anything great in life simply because they're always being reactive to things. And after two months, six months, 12 months, five years, 10 years of this reactive to being reactive to everything around you, 
you're going to see that you've got a mountain of shit just sitting on your shoulder and you can't even move. You can't even get up in the morning. You can't even do anything. By the way, I can go on and on and on about the concepts of kiss and the concepts of simple and the concepts of clarity and the concepts of clean and the concepts of just simple because simple is better because you can accomplish a lot more with less. That's the most important thing for you to understand is that more does not mean more. More always means less and less always means more. Think about that. If you enjoyed this video, please just smash the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Also, let us know in the comments. I would love to engage with you guys. I would love to answer your questions. Let me know in the comments what you think of this video and also what more you'd like to see from this channel. See you in the next video. Cheers.